day. Holy cow, man, I slept late. I actually just got here to the project today. So I wanted to show you what is up. What's the latest here? Man, first thing I gotta do is I gotta turn this fan on. It's a little warm in here. So this thing gives us just the right amount of breeze here to get stuff done. Yeah, so we were in here over the weekend doing some uh, nice tough work here on the electrical. What's up there, Rowan? So, as you know, <clears throat> in this kitchen, before we started the remodel, we told you there was never a, a dishwasher here or a garbage disposal. And so what we've done over the weekend, we had to start coming in and remember, this is a concrete block wall. So instead of carving big stuff into the wall and, and have to go through a whole bunch of trouble, and we were looking at the conditions of the wall and everything, what we decided to do is we're going to frame it so where all of these blue stripes of tape are, are going to be uh, vertical studs or furring strips. We're going to lay the two by fours, not like this, like you would with a stud wall, but like that, onto the concrete. We're going to tap con them in. All right, so that will give us a little crawl space, as I call it. And so we've hung, we actually attached right onto the brick wall here, onto the outside, instead of having to drill into it. That's our counter outlet there, along with the switch for the garbage disposal so then right down here the garbage disposal and the dishwasher will both plug in right here so we're using flexible conduit that's going to go up and it goes into the brick wall there and into the laundry room where the, the panel is there so i see some other people checking in mike land and hello nerdy mr a and oh yeah he says he loves his dewalt fan yeah we love this one this thing on the hottest day if you're within six or seven feet of this thing it will keep you cool. I, I can already feel the cool breeze coming off of this thing. Because it's pretty warm out today. For You would never know it's January. That's for sure. And Ernie says, happy Monday, Jeff. Pumped about Tampa Bay. Yeah, man. Tommy, holy cow. I guess, you know, people every year argue about him. And uh, he's this, he's that. He, but you know what? He's the goat. And every year proves it more and more. Solidifies himself further into goatdom, if that is a word. But anyway, um, wow, Nerdy says 33 here before the wind chill. Well, let me tell you guys something. I have a really bad problem. The weather was really bad here this morning. I woke up and the sun got in my eyes. That's 75 degree sun, so pray for me, okay? Pray for me. All right, so, so we got that done, right? This is the one for the, the outlet that's going to be above the kitchen counter. And then this was the old outlet and we have to put a plate over it that's what sucks now we're hoping this see the stove is supposed to come to here we're hoping the stove will cover most of that but either way we're probably going to have a backsplash here that will cover that uh some of it but you still have to have the plate by code because you can't have any hidden junction so that's a mistake a lot of people make when they're remodeling they'll go right over something like that and you can't do that it must be accessible especially where this point right here is a common point for a lot of the the circuits going that are passing through the kitchen here and then up here we calculated where on the wall we have to put our outlet for the microwave oven which will be in that cabinet that goes right there so not only do you have to figure where the cabinet is but when you look at the back of your cabinets and i don't want to move this one too much because my light is sitting on it oh, what the heck let's do it anyway you have to know where your panels are on the back of the cabinet you have to know where there's keep outs i don't want to be trying to drill a, a big square hole through one of these no way so you have to pick a spot where you know there's a panel on the back of your cabinet so you know that is calculated to be right in the middle of that so i'm not touching any of the wood bracing that's a that's a lot of oops that people run into so we always make sure we avoid that to begin with and ernie says jeff what size tap cons are you using you drilling pilot holes first yes uh, whenever we drill um into concrete we use the concrete bits. Let me see if I've got one here. I had it here on Saturday. Is it on my drill? I don't even know where my drill is. Oh, oh, I don't know if I left it over here or what. I got stuff like all over the place. So I always find myself wandering everywhere trying to find, where's my drill? Where did I put that thing? Any, oh, it's right here, duh. All right, so this is a masonry bit. You can see it right there. So what we do is, is Tapcon is very specific. If you have a quarter inch tap con, quarter inch thick tap con screw, you use a, I think it's the 316 inch. 
So whatever size Tapcon you're using, you use the next size down for the drill bit, right? You drill your hole into the wall, like right here. Let's say we did this one. And then whatever you're attaching to it, the Tapcon will then just go right into it and you just, you just screw it all the way in. But you gotta make sure that the Tapcons tell you that they need a certain amount of embedment into the, the material. And I, I forget if it's a one and a quarter or one and three quarters. I always pull the little card out and look because it, it's different. I think it's different for each screw and the length and all that. So that determines how long your screw needs to be. You have to know what you're going through. I'm going through, let's say, an inch on the back of the cabinet and then five eighths inches of drywall and then one and a half inches of wood first strip and then into the concrete. You can either do it that way or you could just nail the wood to the concrete uh, you know, uh, with the tap con or use a ram set and then just screw through the back of the cabinet into the wood. You can do it that way as well. But yeah, they're very specific guys about the length, how much embedment you need into concrete and you always need to adhere to that rule on all of the screws and fasteners that you use there. Okay, and Jeff, if you have other tools over at that place? Oh, yeah. So, actually, somebody asked me last night on our um, live stream about the free tool giveaway if I've used the pack-out light over here, and I have. So, let me, I'm going to shut the door here for a second to make it darker in here. So, of course, the camera doesn't know because it, it's got a really great sensor on here. But let me turn this on and show you what it does back in there. Watch this. Boom. See? So, yeah, this puts out quite a bit of light. And then there's different modes. So I'm actually in the middle of filming a tool review video of this thing. I've shot a bunch of the scenes already. So there's different ways you can operate it there. And there's off again. <clears throat> so yeah, that was $199 plus I got the 10% uh, off Lowe's coupon. And then here, this is my 30 degree DeWalt nailer. I love this thing because it's like it allows you to get into tighter spots in between uh, the studs to do your nailing there. And we're, uh, we're actually gonna do a tool review on this. I've had this for like three or four years and I don't know why I never got around to filming a tool review video. And, and what was ironic is when I bought it at Home Depot, they didn't carry the stupid nails for it from DeWalt. So I buy these pass load, they, they're at the right angle, I think. And I keep forgetting if it's 30 or 33 degrees, but you guys know what I'm talking about. It's not 20. Like the other ones, it's not the 21 degree or anything. All right, so we did that. I got that circuit. We have the one here for the refrigerator. And let me just give you guys a bit of warning. When you buy refrigerators the last few years, they don't give you the long cables anymore like they used to. So if you pulled out an old refrigerator and the cable was up to here, you're going to be sorely, sorely disappointed when you go to push in the new refrigerator and the cord doesn't reach. So you're most likely in your remodeling going to have to lower that refrigerator outlet. So luckily they already had it lower here too, you know? And JR says, Jeff, you have tools all over that place. Yeah, I do for sure. That place looks like my garage. Oh no. Yeah, it, it's just so small. And then when you start bringing in tools and stuff, man, um, I try to use like the shelves and stuff as much as I can see. Like I got all my little, hand tools going up and down this thing this thing's going to be going away next week so um sometimes i bring one of those five five level stack ups there and i got you know stuff all over here i've got the insulation so this is going to hopefully be going up today i don't i don't know 100 percent sure but so what i need to do is i need to get some of the that two by four furring strips going along the top there so that i can mount my drywall up there on those i have to put it on that side and it'll be easy peasy to do it on this side because there's already a wood uh, truss, what do we call it there, the joist right up there. And then but we have to put the insulation up there. But before I even do that, I have to seal all that right there for fire block. So I have, uh, do I have my fire block here? I thought I brought, I thought I brought, oh yeah, nope, I got the PL here. That's not it. But the fire block, it comes in a tube like this, basically it looks like called. And it's about 12 bucks and you wherever there's a hole any place there's an opening you got to seal it up i might even close up some of these right some of these with it and i have foam as well expanding fire foam because what you're trying to do is prevent the chimney you know 
just like when you have a stud wall now this is not a regular stud wall but usually on a stud wall you'll have wood blocks that go across like this you, you've probably seen them before and those stop the smoke the chimney effect from allowing any kind of fire to spread and, and every all of these techniques folks all they do is they buy you time they, they just buy you time to get out of the, the, the building you know it doesn't they're not going to be fireproof I know no ram set come on brother Listen, I do this so rarely that I need a ramp set that it doesn't even make sense for me to own one. Uh, my friend Al has, I think he has the Hilti one, where you load the little 22s into it and poof. But, it's, you know, I'm, I, you could do it either way. I'm, I'm going to do it just with the Tapcons just to show how to, how to Tapcon furring strips into, into the bricks here. You know, and we'll probably mention the ramp set, but yep. Yeah. I just, I try to avoid doing this kind of work. As I get older and older, I just don't want to do it anymore. And yeah, there's plenty of guys that have those, those RAM sets, but yeah, I just don't own one. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah, Chasing Lottery Millions, he's got it right. He says, oh wow, that block wall sure makes things tricky. Yep. But once we get all of those uh, wood studs here, anchored into the here everything's going to be peachy king because now all we have to do is measure and cut our drywall so there'll be one sheet here that covers these up to i think to there and the next sheet will cover i think it'll we need to add another one and it goes to like here and then we just make a sliver of a sheet that goes here so we'll, we'll three sheets will easily cover this whole wall here so let me see if we did anything else we did we got the stove outlet on there that, that one's finished so remember the drywall is going to come out to about the front face of this guy here so all of these guys are going to be either like at the drywall or a little behind it and then we just put the extender boxes or whatever we need to do to get them out we have to get rid of those guys those are unused we are going to add another outlet over here on the wall above this counter so we have to do it outside and let me show you what we're going to do with that so we come outside the building, we're going to run it from the laundry room and probably under, run the conduit under that front door and around the bottom of the house, right here at the foundation and come like right up to about here where the, that's what most people in this area do. That's how they get all their houses because uh, it's all brick wall. There's no, there's no other way to do it. And then we patched up this hole on Saturday. This came out good. Uh, maybe seeing it down a little bit <clears throat> that was where i showed you before where that plastic conduit was running up here along here and it came down and that used to be an old air conditioner that was in the living room that is no longer there and we took it out and let me show you this so i started to put some of the concrete in here uh when we ran out we have these little bags and i don't know if i still have the other one here or not I brought in these little bags. They're ready-made. I don't know if you guys have seen them. It's like barely enough to, to fill like a big hole like this by itself. But it comes in like a Ziploc bag, and you pour the water in, and you knead it up for a couple of minutes, and now you have some rapid-setting concrete, and you got 15 minutes to work with it. And you just start shoving it in there, and you get it level enough, and then we'll, <clears throat> we'll mud over that later on. And stove outlet has to be 12 inches off the floor. Code violation. How could it be 12 inches off the floor when the bottom of the, um, it goes into the bottom of the, of the uh, outlet, the, the, the stove? I don't know. Uh, a lot of the houses here, even the newer ones, we have them at the floor. So maybe that's in your area. I don't know. But yeah, that's certainly one area you could, you could check in to, to see. So there are certain things that we do and certain things we don't do. We always try to keep the outlet close to the floor because it feeds into the bottom of the stove. <clears throat> Let me see where this one is. No, that's not the stove. That's the dryer. Yeah, we don't have the stove in yet. So, yeah, you probably will see a few violations that we haven't upgraded away from. But in this area, as far as I know, they don't say anything to us about that being right near the floor. And it's actually above the floor. It's not on the floor. It's uh, probably at least a half inch up. Because if you put these things any higher, you're not going to be able to get the stove to, you know, to go all the way in, you know. Uh, yeah, maybe. As long as it's not sticking out too much from the wall, you'll be okay. So, there's that. And then I'm going to show you what we found in the bathroom, which was cool, guys. 
you'll like this. So when we pulled off the medicine cabinet, we found out we could see all the way inside this space here. Look at this. I can look all the way down in there and you can see from the kitchen side all the plumbing, where all the cables are, and it made it a lot easier for us to feed the cables all the way through here and over to the other side there where they had to go, right? And now, that enabled us to bring this in here. We're gonna cut a hole somewhere up in this tile here and put an outlet where they've never had an outlet here in this bathroom before, see? And then Saturday, it took me like an hour to get the old mess out of there that they had they had uh, shark bites, and I replaced it with the soldered copper. Now, this won't meet code either. Supposedly, I think the code wants it to come straight out of the wall, but the plumbing stack is right there. Big old wide plumbing stack. Nothing we can do about it. There's nowhere else to really route it or poke it through or do it, and where people could easily get at it and reach that shutoff valve if they had to shut it off in an emergency. So sometimes, you know, you're at the... the you're at the mercy of how the builder originally did things. So unless you were really tearing down all of these walls, which, you know, you can't, guys. This whole house was built with these brick walls. There was no studs. There was no drywall. Even the freaking closet, which is on the, the hall closet, is on the back side of here, has a brick wall. And there's actually a small sliver of a wall right here that we didn't know was there until we drilled our hole for the refrigerator outlet and realized there's no way to poke through it because the wall is right there. So this house was just, this is where I would come if there was gonna be a nuclear war, man, because this will survive for sure. Okay, so we have this, and then we got my Senko gun here so that when we go to screw the drywall up, we got this baby, this bad boy here. So this thing allow it comes. You you put these strips of like 50 drywallers on there, and <laughs> you just go one after the other after the other. So it's, it goes pretty good, especially when you have to do a ceiling, and you got two guys that are holding on for dear life for the drywall piece on the ceiling, and the other guy's got the gun and he's just going, <laughs> trying to go as fast as he can to get that thing done there. Yep, working with brick walls is a big, big pain. <clears throat> and it just causes so many more complications than you can imagine. And that's why we made the decision to just build out an inch and a half and put drywall. Because, I mean, the wall is just really cruddy anyway. I mean, look at this. I don't know how well it shows up in the camera, but the wall is just really cruddy. And I figured by, by putting our own furring strips on there, and we can shim them and everything, we'll end up with perfectly straight, plumb, true, level, up and down walls that will take a lot of uh, error out of the equation, too. Oh, and check this out. Here's something else. We've, we keep finding out more and more stuff as, as we unravel the here. So I had to replace this the other day. I did a video on this, which we'll upload it next week. So I had to replace, this was the hose bib here. And this isn't even really a real hose bib. This is a, um, what do they call it? The, the boiler drain or something like that. And so, because they ran the water here through PVC pipes, see? And so this is a, a threaded fitting that goes in a PVC pipe and I put the Teflon tape there. But the, the thing here that really makes us nervous is this is all above ground and outside and it's PVC pipe. This is the water supply for the house. So this is like in danger of like if somebody crashes into it, if, a, if you know the lawn guys bash into it, poof, you know there goes your your water. It's going to start shooting out all over the place. And I guess it comes in somewhere around over here. And so here's the other. I have to replace this one as well. There's the main for that one right there, right? And then this was an old hose bib that's no longer used. And my guess is that was galvanized pipe that at some time burst inside the house so they had to stop using the internal plumbing system and go with this this is why they ran it like this this would not be allowed today there's no way and then look at this here's our main is just st sticking up out of the dirt here there's no box for it there's nothing there so we always see these really strange things on these really old houses here like this and you see all these guys here these are to run the in each room has its own air conditioner on the wall that and, uh, and it comes along here and it goes to the main unit so at least those things are still running on their own but i mean 
you can just see the way they did things back then and even trying to trying to fix the stuff and even though we tried our best to go above the you know upgrade the the, the building code and stuff here there's just certain things that you know it would cost too much money to do you know we you know the you got this cast iron stack here and what i'm going to have to do is we you know we had to put all this blocking here for the pipes to strap them down <clears throat> and for my friend's box <clears throat> but i'm gonna have to undo all of this swing it out of the way and we want to sand down this cast iron stack here see some of that rust there surface rust we want to sand it down make sure there's no other cracks we did see one crack back in there we're going to fill it with JB weld. I'm going to see if I got some here. So we have a, the JB weld. We'll fill that crack with that. And then when we're done with that, and I don't see my my little spray cans of paint, but we have the rust inhibitor primer that we will then spray all over the whole thing. And then after that dries, we'll spray paint it with regular paint, which will give this surface a lot, many, many more years of protection against rusting so my guess is they had seen a lot of moisture back in here see that old galvanized pipe that's burst and broken and so they had seen some moisture inside this wall at some point and that's what you got to protect those things against there so we have a lot of work to get through here yeah nice to seal tight outside my neighbor has emt with set screw on the outside of the house to feed unit yep so Oh, you can see what we're up to. And AM says, if you're worried about code, tear the whole place down and rebuild the code. Yep. Yeah. We try to do whatever we can, where we can. The builder never strapped any of their copper pipes or anything. So here, look what I did, guys. Look, this is rock solid. I, I put this block in here and I put a strap there. I strapped the cold water one. On the back side of this, there's another strap right there, strapping this to the wood. I strapped it right there to the concrete. That holds it nice and perfectly steady. I mean, it's just not budging, not budging at all. Even this, just a little shake from here, but that's just from the, the length there. And I have another strap way in the back there. You can barely see it. Let me see. If you move the thing out of the way there, you can see that strap there holding it right at the corner. So we have this kind of nailed down perfectly so it's not going anywhere. Yeah, we're very happy with the way this worked out. There was no leaks or anything once I redid all of that. That took about maybe six hours of work on Saturday total to do this and get that bathroom uh, pipe out of there. That was a nightmare. And you can just see how these are, these are the current conduits. And if this is supplying your ground and these start to rot out too much, you can lose your ground, see? So that's why I'm glad on all of these, we re-ran our own ground wires from the, the fuse panel to right there. See, we're bonding the boxes, don't forget. If you're using metal boxes they have to be bonded to the ground so the green wire will kind of will wrap it around here and then continue on uh, to, to carry on the ground those are all the things you got to watch out for all right so let's see if we have any other questions from anybody otherwise I have to get back to work oh and yeah and then by the way if you guys missed our live stream last night make sure you go watch it that's the one where we tell you about the tools we show you all the tools we're giving away for January next week and the instructions are in the the um description of that video that live stream from last night and it all ends next sunday night at 8 p.m where we will reconvene and we'll do another live stream and we will choose the winner of that of all of the, you know all of the tools there's there's like a dozen tools and some of them have multiple winners <clears throat> I just wanted to show you this. I finally put this new light up here, and it's nice and bright. This is the one that they have at Costco. This is the light here. And I think it's 1,400, yeah, 1,400 lumens. And so this was on sale for $17. They normally have it there for $24. And I bought a bunch, like a half a dozen of these guys on sale at $17 at Costco um, on their last ad cycle. I think they're back up to full price. That's the light that they're replaced, that we replaced them, I see. They're just eh, very dull, very yellow, very ugh. They look a, a lot more modern and sleek. And my friend Larry was here. He already painted the room, so it looks nice. And that's the new color it's going to be instead of this. This thing looks like a din after dinner mint. So he's had to go around and patch up, like, all the walls everywhere. He's just going around with his imperfections. He's going to have to start 
patch in these and get them flat enough. But, but you know what? See, these are cement walls. There's, n there's really not much you can do about stuff like this. What are you going to do? You're going to waste bags and bags of it just trying to feather it out with mud and then, <clears throat> then what? You know, then you have these other old areas here that are all ripply and, you know, this, I don't even think, I don't even, well, I guess they did plaster it. It looks more like a, a skip coat that they put all over the top of it. Uh, here you can get a, a good idea for it, right? Yeah, maybe it was plaster. See, look at this. So that's why you have to make choices in life. We're only going to put the drywall here. We're not going to put it here. We're going to leave the rest of these concrete walls as is, you know. I told her she should just rent this property out for two or three years and then sell it because they own this lot right here. You could, a company could come in and put three townhouses right here and charge 500 grand a piece for them. That's how big this plot of land is. And that's what they're doing a lot in this area too, so. And there you have it, folks. So anyway, I hope you found this informational. I know we ran a little bit longer than we normally like to. You know, I like to answer a lot of questions for people and stuff like that. And yeah, and Nicholas says, HD is clearing out four and six inch slim fit recess lights. Pretty good deal. Yep, uh, we, I bought four boxes of them at Lowe's the other day. They had two packs of the retrofit LEDs for $5. That's two fifty dollars per, per uh, retrofit light. So, yeah, I, I bought, a, I bought a, a good chunk of what they had there. All right. And this Gorilla Ladder has done very well for us, guys. I haven't even brought a ladder over here yet because standing on this, I can reach any place I need to get to, which is nice. So there you have it, folks. So, yeah, remember, go check out our live stream from last night about the tool giveaway because, man, you guys don't want to miss out on some of those. Some really good tools, and we're giving away one of those Craftsman VersaStack rolling coolers as well. All right? So i got to get back to work. You guys have a great afternoon, a productive day, and we'll see all of you on the next one. Bye, everybody.